right, I want to look at one last diagram of a matched pairs. And this is the um, idea of that blind taste test, but in a little bit different scenario than just a Coke and a Pepsi. So researchers from the UK studied the effects of two breathing frequencies on performance times and a, a number of other factors in the front crawl swimming. So the breathing frequencies were either one breath every two strokes or one breath every four strokes. So if you're doing one breath every two strokes, that would be one, two, breathe. So every time that arm comes around, you're gonna turn your head to breathe. If you do it before, you have to go one, two, three, four before you get to turn your head. So there are some advantages and disadvantages to both of these. If you're breathing every two strokes, you're gonna have plenty of oxygen and you'll feel really good about being able to breathe. If you're swimming every four strokes, you might be dying for a little bit of oxygen, but you are gonna be maybe a little more streamlined. And so you might get a little bit better glide out of that, right? So subjects were 10 male collegiate swimmers. Each subject swam 200 meters. Um, one day they swam the B2 and the other day they swam the B4. And it was a random choice as to which one they swam first. So let's look at the diagram first. And then we have a couple of questions to answer about this design. All right, so here is our diagram. We're gonna start with our 10 male swimmers. And then we're just gonna list each swimmer out. So each swimmer is their own line, just like the one we did with the cholesterol. And then instead of doing a before and after, that swimmer is going to flip a coin or in some other way randomly decide, are they swimming B2 on the first day or are they going to swim B4 on the first day? And each swimmer will get that random, will get a random assignment. So each swimmer will flip a coin, for example. It's not like we're going to flip a coin and everybody's going to do it that way. Each one gets their own random flip. Then we're going to compare these and we'll see um, the times, whether they were faster with every two or every four strokes. And then we'll see if there's an overall pattern here. All right, so that's kind of the layout for that design. Let's take a look at these questions. So could this experiment be conducted using a completely randomized design? Um, and how would that differ from the matched pairs? And what do you think? Is that going to be better or worse? And then suppose we allow each swimmer to choose their own breathing frequency and then swim 200 meters using their favorite frequency. Are there any problems with then comparing the performance of the two breathing frequencies if we allow the swimmers to choose their own? So take a minute, just um, jot down a couple thoughts, and then we'll talk about this quick. Okay, so the first question, could we do a completely randomized design? We definitely could. We could put all 10 swimmers' names in a hat, and we could draw five of them, and they swim a B2, and we take the other five, and they swim a B4 and then we could compare them. The problem with that is that each swimmer is so different. I don't know that you're gonna have very accurate answers. I think that the, um, the results are gonna be a little bit muddied, um, especially with a sample size so small, um, trying to see if there's really any pattern there when it could just be by luck of the draw, because random chance can work out that way, that you know, maybe the people swimming in the B2 really are good at B2, and the B4 swimmers are, would actually rather swim the B2, right? So you can get a lot of issues going on there. So you could do a randomized design, but that would definitely not be an ideal approach to this. Your, your results are going to be a little sketchy. Um, so should we allow swimmers to choose their own frequency? So this would be like the randomized comparative where we um, have some swimming B2 and some swimming B4, and then we just compare them. So nobody's swimming both of these. And so this is actually worse than doing a randomized comparative design because you're introducing extra bias there. So you've lost that random assign, so you're losing that cause and effect, and then you're introducing bias by allowing them to choose what they want to swim. So maybe they choose their favorite one. Maybe they're just not feeling it that day. And they're like, yeah, I'll swim the B2. Maybe they're doing some sort of um, I'm better than you bragging type of thing. And so they all decide to swim the B4. You're just introducing a lot of bias by allowing that. So in this case, something like this, a matched pairs design would be a really ideal way to go.